in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go. Shalom to everyone. Shalom to you. Welcome to King James Bible University, Berkeley, Texas. And I am, of course, your teacher for this evening, Deacon Sampson. And it is, uh, you know, it's always an honor for me to <clears throat> be able to come and share the word of the Most High with you all. Who understand and believe the truth as I do and who want to uplift the most high respect, honor and serve him, and do as he say do in obedience so that we can gain the right to be in the kingdom with him. Which is the, the reason of today's uh, today's lesson and today's lesson is God witnessed himself to be true <clears throat> excuse me God witnessed himself to be true because there is no other power force source greater than him so who else can he call on to look to? Okay? We also want to see, uh, how, give us an example of how we should conduct ourselves. You know, we have an example to show how we should act in response and honor to the most high. Okay? We want to get a little of his power and just be intrigued and, and counterpart and having uh, a deeper reverence of respect toward our most high. Okay? So without any further delay, get your pens, pads, your Bibles, of course, and whatever you need to be comfortable. We will not be here too, too long, but just enough to put on our minds the type of God we serve, and to keep ourselves in check, deliberate, constant, on purpose, conscious mindedness of how we conduct ourselves in the presence of our Most High to show Him that we truly want to please Him. Okay? So let's get your books open and let's dive into the Word. <clears throat> and today we're going to begin off this uh, teaching in the uh, book of Isaiah. We're going to go to the book of Isaiah. And I'm going to tell you it over here. Chapter 44. Oops. Chapter 44. And we want 
beginning of 6 through 8. 6 through 8 in the readings. Thus said the Lord, the Spirit of God, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Spirit of God of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. And besides me, there is no God. And who, as I shall call, and what, who, as I shall call, and shall declare it, and set in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people, who, and the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto me. Fear ye not, neither ye be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it? You are my witness. Is there a God beside me? Huh? You are my witness. You tell me. Huh? Is there a God beside me? <laughs> yea, there is no God. I know not any. Not one. See, the, the, the Most High who knows everything and who is, his, his, his uh, wisdom is past finding out and unsearchable. You know, we, it, it, I don't think we could ever know the full vastness and complete totality of the Creator. And if that's, and I'm, I'm trying to put it off in a conceivable mental thought for you to understand. If he say his ways are past finding out, who are we to say that we can search and know the mind of God in its completeness? You know what I'm saying? And if he, that type of God, say he don't know of no one besides himself, why are is it so easy for people to put off in their mind to want to equate or uh, try to pair up God with another of his power, if you can understand where I'm coming from. And these are the type of things that we're looking at and why this lesson is, is come about. But we want to see and understand the type of God that we serve that's incomparable to any other. You understand? I'm going to go ahead and aim for 6 and verse 8. 6 and 8 in the reads. The Lord God has sworn by himself. Who? Himself, said the Lord God of hosts. I abhor the excellency of Jacob and hate his palaces. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein. But he swore by himself. He just told us he didn't know of no other God. Genesis. Go up there to the book of Genesis. And we want to get chapter. Genesis chapter 22. Let me just sit up here. Uh, Uh, give me a second, baby. Um, I don't know why this thing is acting for me. I tell you what, we're doing like this Genesis 22.
and all they will act upon me as that. Sorry, we won't get it by any means necessary. We're not going to let anything deter from getting this knowledge, getting this understanding out of his word. Okay, Genesis, we want 22 and we want verse 16. And it reads, and said, by myself, who said? The Lord, because if you go and read the stories, here this is where he's talking to Abraham, and he said to Abraham, "By myself have I sworn," said the Spirit of God, "for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son." And he went on to continue his excerpt, but by himself have he sworn. But he just told you you know another God, right? Isaiah. Go in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. 22. And we want verse 22. Oh, excuse me, Isaiah 45. I apologize about you. Isaiah 45. Forty-five and twenty-three. Forty-five and twenty-three reads, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return. That unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess but is sworn by himself, witnessing that there's no other God besides him. You understand what I'm sharing with you? Hebrews. Book of Hebrews. And we want chapter 6. And we want to pick it up at 13. And it reads, For when God made for when God made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater. And we just read that. He could swear by no greater. He swear by himself. Then he went on in his bill saying, Surely, bless me. I will bless thee. And multiply and I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So it was so as he said, right? But we're getting the, the understanding and the confirmation of God don't know of anybody or anything power source greater than himself. So he's confirming yet again by himself or of himself to be sure or true. You understand what I'm showing you? Isaiah. Go over here to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah. And we want to get uh, chapter 46. We want to get chapter 40. Six. Forty-six. 
and one verses nine through 10 and it reads, remember the former things of old for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none what? Like me, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel, my counsel shall stand and I will do all, how much? All my pleasure. See that, people? So he has the right to do whatever he wants, correct? He can do it how he wants, when he wants, the way he wants, right? Let's go ahead and pick it up at the feed. Book of your feed. And we want chapter one, three through five, and it reads, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in all with, excuse me, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he had chosen in him before, when, before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of what? His will. See that? His own good pleasure we are did it. Now, let's support that. Look there. Okay? Right out of this book. Let's support that though. Book song. And one. The book of songs. And on one fifteen. Chapter 115, verse 3 reads, But our God is in the heavens. Where is our God in the heavens? He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. See, their gods are on earth, or their gods are in their own mind, or their gods are the workmanship of their own hand. But our God is in the heavens, and he does what he pleased. Not them, their gods, or those idols being little cosmic genies to perform whenever they're summoned. You understand what I'm saying? And that's how a lot of our people try to act toward the most high. They want to put them in the trick bag, put them out when they want, how they want, deal with them in the manner in which they want him to respond. That's not the type of God we serve people. Okay. We want Psalms one thirty five. One thirty five and six reads Whatsoever the Spirit of God pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth in the seas in all deep places what did he do whatsoever the lord please is what he did huh romans let's get one more witness on on how he has the right to do whatever his mind can conceive or think of to pacify himself or to give himself his own pleasure, as he said in his word. And we want Roman 9 and I want verse 
21 says, 21 reads, Have not the potter over the clay? Has not the potter power, excuse me, over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? That's his choice, right? For he has said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, and that I may show my power in thee, and that my name might what? Be declared throughout all the earth. You see that? That his way might be declared throughout all the earth. And if I am mistaken, uh, that's why I'm over here. In Exodus 9 16. Yeah. And in a very deed, this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power and that my name my way may be declared throughout all the earth so you see that right y'all see that right he got the power to do what he want how he want and you're going to give him the reverence and respect due. You understand what I'm sharing with you? So now let's go over here and see how the example is given to us to honor of a servant, to honor the Most High. How we should submit ourselves unto him and show that respect. You know what I'm saying? John. The book of John. And we want verse, I'm excuse me, chapter five. Chapter five. And we want verse 30. And it reads, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just. Why? Because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. You see that? Six thirty-eight reads. 638 read for I came down from heaven not to do my own will but the will of him that sent me who will the father's will and this is and this is the father's will which has sent me that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day you see his will for us? He said, can he make vessel of honor, vessel of dishonor? We striving to be a vessel of honor and fulfill his will for those vessels of honor. You know what I'm saying? But he just said that who he was given, he'll lose none of them. So aren't you striving to be one of the uh, uh, ones that are none left? Or that's none lost? which he has sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing. I don't want to be lost. You understand what I'm sharing with you? John 8.
eight and we're on verse fifty and it reads and I seek not my own glory and this is the mind state that we should have. I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeketh and judge. See that? We have an example to show how we should humble ourselves. So now I want to understand and ask of you what and how can we in, uh, encapsulate how can we encompass the most high off inside our own little, you know, little container? I said a while ago, people want to put them off off inside this, uh, off inside their little trick bag, off inside their little uh, Pandora box type mind shader you know, harnessing the power of the Most High and unleashing it for their own selfish, perverted wills, desires. But look what it said in the word of the Most High. Look what it said. 50, we read that 7, 50 through 48, and it reads, Had not my hand made all these things huh because everything of the world he, he made it and if we the people workmanship of his hand and we're making taking his resources to make things for ourselves he said had not my hand made all these things every last bit of it huh heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool what house will you build me now that question right there ought to make a lot of people think so and ask themselves why are they really truly in these buildings? If he's saying that everything his hand made and we want to take the resource, or the provisions and resources that he give to try to make a container to stuff him in for our own selfish will and purpose. You know what I'm saying? For the age. How be it the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with him, as saith the prophet. You see that, people? You see that? Well, a lot of us have a mind state that we want to be God to God, and he need us to take care of him. He need us to provide for him. And that is so far from the truth. The Father do not need us to provide for him. He don't need us to give him life. And he sure don't need us here for him to be, be life. You understand what I'm sharing with you? Psalm 50. We're going to read 9 through 12. So I want to share with you that he doesn't need our provision. Because what can we bring to him? We're getting everything from him. Right? Psalm 59 through 12 read, I will take no bullet out of thy house, nor he goes out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountain and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine, and the fullness thereof. See that? The world is mine and the fullness thereof. Which remind me about some. world of mine in the fullness of uh, Psalms. Thirty four. Nope. Psalms. 
And it reads Psalms 24 and 1 reads The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We all belong unto him. You understand what I'm saying? And he said, Here, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. And that will witness. You know what I'm saying? I'm sharing with you. And since all the provisions are here, and he's more advanced than anything that we could ever put him in, let's look at an angle of his power and how he, uh, how he, he conducts himself. Go over here to sixty one sixty three. Um, what's there? Sixty three. Sixty-three and five, and it reads, "And I looked, and there was none to him." Didn't you say earlier he didn't know of no other God but besides him? And he was saying here, "And I looked, and there was none to him, and I wondered that there was none to uphold." Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. See that? Yeah. Number. 23 19 read God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So he gonna do whatever he, he say he gonna do, because he say he can do whatever he, he pleases, right? And he only pleases to do that which is good, or that which is good is what pleases him. If you understand what I'm saying, he's a God of order. I will. I said fourteen and I want twenty twenty four and I read the Lord of hope has sworn saying surely as I have thought so shall it come to pass and as I have purpose so shall it stand you see that what he has purpose so said this man. Didn't he say he do what he pleased? As he have purpose. As I have purpose. So shall it stand. 26 and 27. This is the purpose that is purpose upon the whole earth. 
And this is the hand power that is stretched out upon all the nations. For the Lord of hosts has purpose. And who shall disannul it? And his hand is stretched out. And who shall turn it back? See that, people? Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30, 32. Jeremiah 32 and 17 read, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out on. And there is what? Nothing too hard for thee. What is it? Nothing too hard for thee. Remind me. Look at that. Look, uh, this one. Look, one. Yeah. Right here. See what they say? Look, one and thirty seven. For with God, nothing shall be. Impossible. You see that? For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And we just read over in Jeremiah 32 17 that nothing is too hard for him. This is the type of God we serve, people. You understand what I'm sharing with you? You understand what I'm trying to encourage your hearts on the end? Let's go over here to Isaiah. Isaiah. Um, Isaiah 60. Sixty-three and five, and it reads, And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. See that? Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me, but there was none else to do it. You know what I'm saying? We have to we have to understand that his his own power brought salvation unto him, gave himself peace. Because he was upset at us as a people. You understand? And my fury, it upheld me. But who did it? I looked that there was none to help and wondered that there was none to uphold. So my own arm did. Isaiah. I'm gonna go to forty eight. Isaiah forty eight. And eleven. For my own sake, even for my own sake, will I do it 
for how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So you think he's he going to let you shame him? Huh? First John. That he's going to let you make him look bad? No, he gonna work everything out smoothly, properly. This type of God we serve. John 1, chapter 1, and verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. It's pure God of light, and in him is no darkness at all. You see that? And I gave you all of that to have an understanding of the type of God that we're looking at for this reason here. I shared all of those other passages of support for the God that we serve so that we can have an understanding to look at this part right here. Because the, this the part that stood out to me. And I wanted to be able to have confidence in this part right here. Right here. Well, see, I was reading some stuff, but this book stood out to me. 19, yeah, and then, and then through 22, and they read. And the word of the Spirit of God came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus said the Lord, Spirit of God, if you can break my covenant of the day, my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season. Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, the priests, my minister, as the hosts of heavens cannot be numbered, neither the sands of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David, my servant, and the Levites that minister unto me. You see that? Then, 25, 26. Thus said the Lord, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob, David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. So there's a chance for us people. And we want confidence and a surety to trust in the one that said he would perform, the one that said that his word will not return unto him that he sent out. So God has no other source of power to witness himself or to, or to witness and confirm who he is and to pledge a, you can trust me by a, a source of power greater than himself, but himself. You understand what I'm sharing with you? He, he knew of no other source that he could go to greater than him but himself 
to swear by that he will perform certain things. And we are his people. And he said he won't cast us away. We have a chance and an opportunity, people, okay? So let's get in this word. And let's get it so we can obey and show him that we want to please him and be in his presence. So keep in mind, 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You understand, people? So until we come together again at the table of Jehovah for another breaking of his bread, I bid you all shalom.